Welcome to Trinity Tulsa. Trinity is a place for all people. We are a church family made up of varied backgrounds and faith stories. And we invite you to add your voice to the collective story. Trinity has room for longtime followers of Christ, for doubters and everyone in between. We honor every human as a beautifully made creation of God, affirming all individuals as their authentic selves. We strive for justice and peace and respect the dignity of every human being. And we welcome you and your unique contributions to our community. Encouraging and honoring your questions of faith. We are at our best when we listen and grow together. We hope you will feel the presence of God in this holy space. And believe that you'll also find God in the community of people who worship here. May this place be to you a source of strength and spiritual renewal. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, Trinity welcomes you. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, Trinity welcomes you.
Good morning, Trinity. So glad you are with us this morning. If you're new, welcome. Welcome home. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who has prepared for those who love thee such good things as pass man's understanding, pour into our hearts such love toward thee that we, loving thee in all things and above all things, may obtain thy promises which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. Good morning. Our first reading this morning is from the Acts of the Apostles. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him and saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. When he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Tros and took a straight course through two other ports from there to Philippi, which is the leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river, where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down. We spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Tyratira and a dealer in purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the Revelation to John. In the spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city, Jerusalem, coming down out of the heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring into it the glory and the honor of the nations, but nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing, occur, uh, nothing accursed will be found there anymore. But the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it, and his servants will worship him. They will see his face, and his name will be on their foreheads and there will be no more night. They will need no light or the, of the lamp or the sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Jesus said to Judas, not Iscariot, those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, 
and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away, and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Let the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. So, three weeks ago, Mother Cheryl started us on this journey of love. If you remember the story, Peter and Jesus are having this discussion. Jesus starts off with go, Peter, do you love me? Agape. Peter answers, well, of course I love you. Filio. Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? Agape. Peter says, you know I love you. Filio. Jesus says, Peter, do you love me? Filio. Peter says, Lord, you know I love you. Filio. Jesus was asking Peter to come to a place of unconditional love. Twice asked agape love, that kind of love. Peter was only able to get to filio, brotherly love. So Jesus, instead of asking a third time, met Peter right where Peter was able to be. Last week, Nancy Gill preached on love as well. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. She then put it together sort of as the Ten Commandments. She sort of put it down to the Ten Commandments and then brought it down to those two things. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. So this week, I get to take that and push it a little further. I'm going to take the Ten Commandments to the two to four words. Love God, love people. It's been my theology from day one. Love God, love people. So I begin to ask, what is this about this whole theme of love that we've been walking through these number of weeks that each of us has tried to sort of preach on? So I started asking, what is love? What is love? Don't ask me, don't ask me, no more. Okay. Somewhere, my love. I'm kind of reaching back here. But love has multiple meanings that we like to play with a little bit. And a lot of the songs that we hear about, that we, that we talk about, um, What's love got to do, got to do with it? What's love but a second-hand emotion? Okay. Is it really, Tina, just a second-hand emotion? Or is there more to it than that? What you have to remember is that what we have been talking about, whether it's filio or eros, is about a feeling. It's about something that gives us a warm fuzzy. It's an adjective or verb. What Jesus was asking Peter to do was make it a noun. 
Agape love is a noun. It's an embodiment of love. It is the love that starts from the toes, works all the way up the body and out the top of your head. You live and breathe it. You sing about it. So I ask again, what is love? Care. Love is care. We care for each other. We do things for each other. Each week we come together out of love and go before that altar rail and share our most deepest feelings about God. We embody that love with each other. Even if we argue with each other, and if we don't politically agree with each other, we still go to that altar rail and bear our souls before God. That's what love is about. Love in any language, straight from the heart. We just sang our song, our sequence hymn. Love has come again like... There we go. Love, love, love. Dun, dun, dun. We have all these songs that, sort of, that sort of, we sort of burst forth with that teach us about what love is about. But again, it's about a feeling. I want us as Trinity to embody what love is all about. How do we do that? How do we go from where Peter was? Remember, Peter is the rock. Peter is the foundation from which all of the church is going to be built off of. But even he couldn't get to where Jesus wanted him to be. So how do we build and how do we bring ourselves to that point where unconditional love is literally unconditional love? Give me your unconditional love. See, everybody's going to get, I see people starting already. Again, we burst into song and sometimes it brings us to that place. We have to be able to love beyond love. We have to be able to look at the other as a precious gift of God, not an other. There is never an other in the church. We're really good at creating categories and labels and all the things that go with that. But if it's unconditional love, if it is agape love, there are no conditions. There are no categories. Let me share a story of love. This past week, I had the opportunity to meet a family I knew nothing about. This family showed up. It was... Uh, a woman, she's 89 years old, she was very proud to tell me that, 89. It was her husband, her children, and a son. There were about seven people that came. And she told me a story about Trinity that I had no knowledge of. This bait dates back to 1917, prior to this building being built. Apparently, a young couple, well, not young couple, young couple that had seven children, she moved from Perry, Oklahoma, to Tulsa. I don't know the reason. I didn't ask. But her husband stayed. She moved here, was a substitute teacher, bought a small little place where all, all eight of them could be, and then eventually bought us a little parcel of land on West 8th Street. The house is still standing there today, by the way. So, bought a little parcel of land, and they bought the one that was next to it. On the one next to it, there was some lumber that happened to be there. They became members of Trinity when they moved here from Perry. And then Trinity built the house for them. So years later, this is the grandfather and grandmother. Years later, a promise was made from the grandfather to the father to now the daughter, who's 89. She said, we were told that we needed to make sure that we take care of Trinity because Trinity took care of us at a time when we had nothing. So they came, and she said, now this was supposed to happen when I pass. She said, she said actually, I'm 89 years old. She said, this is supposed to happen when I die. But she said, I want to do this while I'm living. She presented me with a check. This was the promise that the grandfather, the father, and now she was fulfilling. 
It wasn't a matter about the amount. It was that the love had come full circle. Trinity had reached out to her, built this little house for her and her family so that they could reside. Eventually, the father did come from Perry to here. He also wrote an autobiography, which we now have in our library. On page 258, it talks about this story, how Trinity built a house for this family, and now it has come full circle that they wanted to make sure that they gave back to Trinity because of the love that was shown to them. Again, agape love is the complete embodiment of that love. It is a noun. It is something you bring into existence and becomes part of your walk each and every day. So Trinity, my prayer, my hope is that love is not and will never be a secondhand emotion. Amen. Standing and taking your bulletin, saying the Nicene Creed together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church in the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of the holy word and live in unity and godly love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give grace, O heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of, Canter <clears throat> Pardon me, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, and Polson, our own bishop that they may, both by their life and doctrine, set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. Lord, in your mercy. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence, they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. Lord, in your mercy. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land. For Joseph, our president, Kevin, our governor, GT, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. 
Lord, in your mercy. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. Lord, in your mercy. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor Barbara Sue, Odell, Nancy, Paulette, Alicia, Marjorie, Shirley, Taylor, Cameron, Finley, David, Brandy, Barbara, Heidi, Mary, Vivian, Rama, Theodore, David, Siren, Jay, Leslie, Lynn, Hattie, Lisa, David, Polly, Belinda, Ben, Louise, Pete, Keith, Jackie, Becky, Tammy, Paul, Glenn, Celia, all that are suffering from COVID and the people of Ukraine, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. Lord, in your mercy. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace so to follow the good examples of all your saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. My friends, the peace of the Lord be always with you. With Greet one another in the name of the Lord. And have a seat for just a few moments. Tell you what, let's go one more. All you need is love. <laughs> see, there it is. Okay, see? That'll be the earworm that you'll take with you on the way out the door today. A couple of announcements real quick. If you're new with us this morning, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for allowing us to take this journey with you. On either end of the pew, you will find a burgundy envelope. Make sure you fill that out. Let us know who you are. That way we can keep in contact with you. We can kind of find out your story. and You got to know our story as well. We're so glad that you're with us this morning. Ascension Day service will be this Thursday at 7 o'clock. Join us for that. Come and join us. It's one of the high feast days of the year. Gifts of Imperfection book study starts on June 6th. Uh, there are sign-ups on our website online. Discerning Spiritual Gifts, which is the course that I'm teaching, starts today. Uh, at 12.15, we will meet upstairs uh, in the conference room. We were usually going to meet in the, in the Great Hall, but I figure a lot of people will be in and out of there and that kind of thing. So we'll meet upstairs at 12.15, and we'll begin that uh, right after that in, the, in that area. Uh, VBS and Acting Camp information is also on our website for this summer. English Conversation Circles is on Thursday from 4 to 6. The place has changed to the San Miguel School. EFM begins on September 7th. Um, the 11 o'clock service next week will not be live streamed. Um, we, our, our tech person needs a vacation day, and that's okay. So um, we, we are training some other people that are involved, so we will not be live streaming. So those of you who are watching online, you got to be here next week if you want to if you want to do it. Okay, um, and we will be closed on uh, May 30th, which an observance for Memorial Day. Um, I can't think of anything else that needs to be talked about. All right, walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself an offering and sacrifice to God.
remind you that all persons are welcome to receive at this altar. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is very meet, right, and our bound and duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. But chiefly are we bound to praise thee for the glorious resurrection of thy Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us, and hath taken away the sin of the world, who by his death hath destroyed death, and by his rising to life again, hath won for us everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth of all of thy glory, glory to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name. All glory be to thee, O Lord, our God, for that thou didst create heaven and earth, and didst make us in thine own image, and of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to take our nature upon him, and to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption. He made there a full and perfect sacrifice for the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to thee, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy people, do celebrate and make with these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee. The memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming again with power and great glory. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy word and Holy Spirit, to bless and sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be unto us the body and blood of thy dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, whereby we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies. Grant, we beseech thee, that all who partake of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and thy whole church may be made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him through the same Jesus Christ our Lord.
by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost. All honor and glory be unto the O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ have taught us, we are bold to say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover is sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God.
saying the post-communion prayer together, let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost feed us with these holy mysteries, with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have the fearest of thy, of thy favor and goodness towards us, that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us children of God, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of God's blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.